What did I miss? Brian here, and well, this is a different video, as you could tell by the thumbnail and the title. To keep things short and simple, I got a Gen 5 Glock 19. Before we get into it, let's make sure that it's not loaded and the chamber is empty. Sure enough, the mag is empty, and same with the chamber. So here it is. This is the Glock 19 Gen 5. As you can see, it says it on the slide. And this is the version 2 model. They did make a version 1 model where it didn't have the serrations on the front and it had that half circle cut out in the front. On this one, they filled out the half circle and added the serrations on the front. And that's really it. This gun costed me $539 before tax. <laughs> with tax, it brings it up to $627, and it comes with extra stuff like the hard case, grip back straps, a speed loader, two extra mags, a lock, a brush, a plastic cleaning rod, and the owner's manual. And highly recommend you read the owner's manual when you first get a firearm. Now I'm gonna go ahead and close this and move it off to the side. Going into the Gen 5 Glock 19, version two to be more specific, it looks like Glock just took a Gen 4 model, did some small changes here and there and called it a Gen 5. Cause if you look at it, the lower is basically identical to a Gen 4. From a distance, it looks like a normal Glock, but if you were to see it up close, you start to notice some things. The three things that the Gen 4 and the Gen 5 models have in common are that one, you could add the grip back strap. You could switch the mag release from the left side to the right side for left-handed users. And it uses the same guide rod, which is a dual spring guide rod. Other than the few Gen 4 traits that were carried over to the Gen 5 Glock, let's go over the other things that Glock has done to this gun. Right off the bat, you could see the serrations on the front of the slide, the front tapered end, and the flat grip. And those are the things that people notice right away. Another thing about this gun is the slide lock is ambidextrous. As you can see, it's on the left side of the gun. And if I were to flip it, you can see it's on the right side as well. Now, for all the left-handed shooters out there, I'm pretty sure you're freaking out, or not. <laughs> but for all the right-handed shooters like myself, this doesn't really apply. However, I do plan to train left-handed, and this gun is very left-handed friendly. Now, the Gen 4 Glock, it's slightly left-handed friendly, but this is a lot more left-handed friendly. And the reason why I say that is because with the Gen 4 Glock, you could flip the mag release and put it on the right side. However, the slide lock is strictly for right-handed shooters. Whereas with the Gen 5 Glocks, and this is for all Gen 5 Glocks, you could push down the slide lock with your left hand. So you can see, here it is with my right hand, and here it is with my left hand. As for the internals, the only thing I could say is that it uses a dual spring guide rod like the Gen 4 Glocks. As for the rest of it, I can't say much because I don't have a Gen 3 or a Gen 4 Glock to do a direct comparison. So it's hard to tell what's been improved and what's been upgraded. But from what I hear, Glock has made some improvements on the Gen 5 model Glocks. Going into the looks of this gun, well, it took me a bit to get used to it. Not saying it's a bad thing, or maybe it is, but I was thrown off by the serrations on both ends of the slide and the tapered end. Now, this goes for all Gen 5 Glocks, uh, not just this one. But I'm used to seeing the serrations being only on the rear of the slide and the front being sharp and square, whereas you can see this is rounded. Taking a closer look, you can see that the front is more rounded and it's not as sharp. And the tapered end is very common on the Glock 26 and the 27, which are the subcompact Glocks. But Glock made it a thing for all the Gen 5 Glocks. Not sure why they did that, but it's a, a new thing now. One thing that has not changed is the sights. As you could see, it's using the traditional U-shape rear sight with the white dot in the front. I, I don't mind the sight. I'm pretty sure I'm gonna change it at some point, but for now, I'm gonna use it while I have it. 
Now, why did I get this gun in particular? Well, believe it or not, I actually didn't want to. In fact, when I was at the gun store, I had found a Gen 4 Glock 23 and I was dead set on getting it. However, the salespeople advised against it for three reasons. One, it holds less rounds. Another reason is because the Glock 23 shoots a 40 cal, which I was fully aware of. It's a lot more difficult to control compared to a 9mm. And lastly, 40 cal SNW bullets are a lot more expensive than 9mm rounds. So it was a smarter choice to go with the Glock 19. And to top it off, this at the time was the last Gen 5 Glock 19 in the store before they would go out of stock for weeks. And I just happened to be that lucky person to get the last one. And what I didn't know is that these, or any Gen 5 Glock in general, are in high demand right now and everybody's wanting them. So honestly, I'm glad I got this model instead of the Glock 23. Now, why get a Glock in general instead of like a 1911 or a SIG or a Beretta? Well, I want something that will work consistently and that could take the abuse and that won't fail on me. And Glocks are known to last for a long time and they could take as much abuse as they can and it will still work. I took this gun out to the range and I have to say, I'm very impressed with the performance, the consistency, the grouping on the targets, and the recoil honestly is not even that bad. So for the most part, I'm very satisfied with this gun. However, there can be some improvements, mainly for myself. One major thing is the gripping. And whenever I grip the pistol, there's a lot more pressure being put at the bottom of my hand and a lot less pressure at this part of my hand between my thumb and my index finger. For whatever reason, it's like barely touching my hand right here and it feels kind of awkward. So whenever I'm holding it and I'm trying to shoot it, it, it feels kind of weird whenever I'm trying to like counteract the recoil. And I'm gonna change some other parts and make them extended parts like the slide lock, the mag release, the takedown lever because for whatever reason this one is very difficult to work with when I'm trying to take down the Glock. And I'm gonna change the trigger to a better trigger because this one works, it's fine, but I figured there's a better trigger out there that fits me best. And like any other Glock owner, I'm gonna change the back plate to one that is metal and has a design on it. These are plastic from the factory and it looks all right. However, it's already taking damage. So you can see some of the plastic is already coming off just from shooting it and taking the gun apart. There's a whole lot that I want to do with this. I've already listed out a few things I'm gonna change out, but there is a whole lot more that I want to upgrade and change out, etc., etc. I'm also gonna be going out to the range more, so be on the lookout for those types of videos. Before ending this video, I'm gonna be adding the first mod to this gun, and that is a backstrap, because like I said, it's a bit of an awkward grip for me. Now, this gun came with four different backstraps, two with the tail and two without. Now, one set of each makes the overall grip thicker, while the other set only adds to the top part and keeps the bottom consistent. And that's what I'm trying to go for. The one I'm gonna go for is one with the tail and only adds to the top and keeps the bottom consistent. And if you look on the other side, it comes with an extended pin. Unfortunately, I don't have a pin pusher or anything that could push the pins out. So the closest thing is a very small screwdriver. There's the pin. Then I'm gonna take the back strap and add it onto the gun. Man, already this feels a lot better. Now all that is left is the extended pin. Okay, the back strap is secured and man, this feels so much better already. This feels very comfortable. Oh man, that back strap is everything. <laughs> so that is the first mod done already. Now I've already got a few other things lined up, so be on the lookout for those videos. And so 
That is it for this video. I gave my overall thoughts and opinions on this gun, went over what I plan to do with it, and already added the first mod to it. If you're subscribed, thanks. If you're not, thanks for taking the time to watch this video. Take care everyone, I'll catch you on the flip side.